Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another new video of me learning more about Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. As you can see from the title of today's video, I am going to be reacting to a look inside a Norwegian prison. I've kind of heard a few things about Norwegian prisons over the years, like they're quite comfortable, they're quite nice compared to prisons that you see in the UK and especially the US and I imagine a lot of other countries in the world. So I'm kind of very excited about this. I'm not saying that I ever want to go to prison and actually experience these in Norway but I'm curious to know what the prisons are like in Norway because I've heard that they are genuinely like nice. I don't know, it seems weird saying that about a prison, but yeah, I guess we'll see. So let's do it. This is a look inside a Norwegian prison. Kelly Kobiea travels to Norway for our Sunday Spotlight. In this vast forest of pine and blueberry is what some call the world's most humane prison, Halden Prison, where new inmates are greeted the way I was, with a handshake. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Drug smugglers, murderers, rapists, all doing time in a maximum security prison that feels more like a college campus. This is home? Yeah, this is home, yeah. Karsten was convicted of killing a man in Brazil. This is his cell block with a full kitchen. I mean, oh my God, it looks like a house. It, I mean, look at that kitchen. It's not like incredibly an amazing kitchen, but for a prison, for a cell block, that is insane. I, I'm kind of in shock a little bit. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's just a little bit crazy. Big screen TV, laundry room. You have a key to your own cell. Yeah, everybody has their own key. He and the rest of the prisoners are locked in overnight. The rest of the time, they choose when to lock the door to their cozy single bed cells with a TV and a private bathroom. They used to be in uh, prison in Brazil and there was- Okay, so that just looks like a hotel room. Let's be honest, like not a five star hotel by any means, but like a two star hotel. Um, uh, <laughs> That's insane. They let themselves in and out whenever they want, um, of the facility, I mean. And they have their own private bathrooms. They have a TV, little TV on the wall, single bed. It definitely, she said it was cozy. It definitely looks cozy. Um, wow. Never seen a prison like that before in my life. Absolutely never. So just a little bit bigger than this. And there used to be 15 people in the same room. The point here to turn criminals into good neighbors. Always have coffee on the go. Thank you. I mean, if you if you think about how well that prisoner was interacting with the reporter, it's insane to think that that, that is someone that's in prison. You know, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm all for it. I'm I'm quite progressive in terms of rehabilitation. Maybe not to every single criminal like if you're a serial killer or you know a rapist or other serious crimes but yeah I think rehabilitation is definitely important but that's a whole other discussion. Rehabilitation says the prison governor starts on day one. We take the freedom from them that uh, when they are here we try to help them to get a better citizens. Inmates have a normal work week giving them routine and responsibilities training to be car mechanics and graphic designers in a state-of-the-art studio. From the city hall, we're getting jobs from, from them. Learning skills like restaurant prep, where they're trusted to handle knives, can help them get jobs on the outside. Trusted to handle knives as well. I mean, like, definitely in the UK, I imagine the US as well, they're not giving the prisoners knives to use, you know, like it's normal. It just, it's not going to happen, is it? It's just... It's, it's insane to think of because it's something that, you know, we don't experience here in the UK. The prison system is definitely a lot different. Um, but, wow, I'm, I'm sure, hopefully, it maybe works in Norway. I can't ever imagine it working here. I don't think it would ever happen here. Uh, but I think it's definitely something that should be looked into, for sure. They have weekends off 
and a house available for overnight visits with their families. Welcome to uh, Criminal crazy. Records. Thank you. <laughs> Richard is studying music. He's doing time for murder and served his first four years in a Swedish prison. I was very hateful myself when I came here, you know, because I come from a very, very hard prison system. There we really hate the guards and the guard hate, hated us. Do I feel like a, per a different person now? Yeah, I do. Here, guards and, and I think that's probably part of it as well. It's like how you treat somebody. I'm not saying that somebody who's murdered anyone should be treated like better than anyone else. But I do think there's something about treating someone humanely and, you know, treating them as people. I don't know. It's a very complex situation because obviously these people have done really terrible things and torn apart families and whatever. But I don't know. I don't know. It's just insane. The facilities in this prison. Computers work side by side with inmates. <laughs> Playing chess or simply going for a walk. It's all about building relationships and trust, even with the prison boss. He looks so happy. It's an inmate who painted it. There are cameras and locks, but no weapons. And nearly half of the guards are women. But do you feel safe? Yes, I do. Wow. Why? Well, I mean, we, we get to know all the prisoners pretty well. We interact, but we're, we're with them all the time. Norway's model isn't cheap. Not I reckon this American uh, reporter is just in complete shock, like probably even more shocked than me, because I imagine she's definitely done some reporting on the American uh, prison system. And I can imagine this is like a fantasy world, like a, something so unusual. Uh, so yeah, she's probably in shock. I think a lot of people watching this video will probably be in shock as well. $93,000 per inmate per year, three times more than in the U.S. But only 20% wow. of inmates re-offend after two years. In the U.S. It's and I think that's that's the main thing, isn't it? It's like if you can stop these criminals re-offending, you're kind of helping the society, I guess. Because there's a lot of times where people come out of prison and they just keep reoffending, keep murdering, keep raping and keep assaulting people and it just never ends. So I think it is about, you know, trying to lower the reoffending rate. 60%. There's no death penalty and life sentences were banned in 1981. Even mass murderer Andres oh, wow. Brevet, who killed 77 people in a 2011 attack, was given a maximum sentence yeah, of 21 this. years, though that is extendable. Conservative critics say Norway has gone too far. Yeah, I mean, I do think I draw the line sometimes that, you know, something like that, you know, that guy who killed all those people in Norway. Uh, you know, I definitely think life sentences should be had for people like that. I mean, when you commit a crime that's so awful like that, you know, when you kill so many people with pure hatred in your heart, um, you know, I definitely think life sentences should be there. So I don't know if I agree with not having life sentences, but I don't know. I'm not Norwegian. What about the victims who actually has this, um, uh, feel really in, in, in justice that the people who commit this crime can actually live in this luxury. But if someone were to say to you, wow, this looks like a pretty luxurious lifestyle. Most of all and I agree with that because, uh, you know, there are, it's not just about the victims, it's about the victims' families. It's like they always will have to live with, you know, having that loss. And it must be hard to see the killers in this case or the rapists or whatever living in what is called luxury um, in terms of, relative in terms of other prisons. So yeah, I get it. I get both sides, to be honest. No, I'll go and see it outside for a long time. Outside the wall. But these men admit they've been helped here. Before I uh, think more like a criminal, but uh, now I start to think more like a normal guy, you know? If you treat an inmate uh, and that's good. like an animal, he'd be an animal. If you treat an uh, inmate with respect, he respects you back. He is a human being. Yeah, we treat them like human. Those are definitely very valid points. And I can see that, you know, that is very important in terms of, you know, helping these people not reoffend. Um, when you treat someone humanely, hopefully they treat you the same way back. And then it's, you know, it, it's difficult. Beings. Lessons many here believe could extend beyond these prison walls.
For Sunday today, Kelly Kobiella hauled in prison, Norway. Kelly, thank you very much. You can see more in-depth reporting in our just... Well, okay. So that was definitely uh, eye-opening, I guess. I've never seen a prison like that. You know, I've seen a lot of prisons in... Not personally, because I've never been to prison, but I've seen a lot of prisons on the TV, um, on the news, on documentaries uh, from the UK, from the US, from South America. And they are a world away from what I just witnessed in that video. And, you know, I am relatively progressive. I do believe in rehabilitation. Um, but I, I don't know, it's a tricky one because, you know, there are going to be people that don't agree with this the system and that's fair enough especially if you're you know families or friends of the victims of such crimes you're not going to want to see these people living in such you know luxury i say luxury because it's not actually luxury but it is luxury in terms of prisons um but yeah i don't know let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below it's definitely a very complex uh T a subject i guess and it's going to be one of those topics that people will probably be debating for ages especially in norway because i imagine you know like in that video there were political parties that kind of don't agree with the, how the system is working and how it's being done because they don't think it's fair and uh, again all views are valid so yeah but definitely this was eye-opening and you know i am learning more and more about norway and how they like to treat people humanely and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, Norway just seems like this really, this country that is so, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say, you know, you like utopian because obviously bad things still do happen there. But compared to a lot of other countries, it's like, it's, I don't know, it's forward thinking. It's, I'm speechless. I'm not saying that I ever want to go to prison in Norway, but imagine going to prison in Norway you know you're living in 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 something like that it's not gonna be terrible is it so i suppose you don't have freedom but you know whatever but yeah that was me reacting to a look inside a prison in norway let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below if you did like this video please give it a like uh a thumbs up uh, please subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. I really want to share this journey with you as I learn more uh, about Norway, Sweden and Denmark. I know this is the second video I've done and it's about Norway, but I will be doing other videos about Sweden and Denmark as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully join me on this journey. Hopefully you subscribe. And I really just want to learn as much as I can about these three countries and explore more of them. Hopefully go to them again um, in the future. I would really, really love that because I just... I love, I love the countries. Uh, and until next time, guys, stay safe and I'll see you soon.